Hello and welcome to another edition of Talkin' Tunes. I am your host, Frank Walsh. Thanks for tuning in today. Now folks, as you know, the name of the show is Talkin' Tunes. Well, we're gonna be a little bit different today because unless uh, my two guests here burst into song, we're gonna be having mostly talk. And um, we're here to promote a very special event. We're here to talk about a group that we all know and love. And rather than me talk about it, I'm going to introduce you to my two guests who are going to tell you all about it. First, we have Mark Nolan, and we have from Soulbox himself, Mr. Matt Smith. He plays the keys and a little bit of vocals on them. So, welcome aboard, guys. How are you, Frank? I'm doing Frank. well. Thanks for coming in today. Thank you for having us. Well, you know, you would ask, and I said, hey, you know, why not? Everybody loves Soulbox. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to know what's going on. Yeah. And, and you have this big event that is going to showcase Soulbox. So Welcome why don't you uh, talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, having a party um, with Soulbox, which is a very fortunate event. I was able to get these guys to get together for one show. And let's all come out and enjoy a beautiful night of music at my home. Mm -hmm. Welcome to everyone that comes. Everyone, no one's not invited. Come on down, 1205 Locust Street, Raynham, August 12th, 6 to 10. Soulbox will be there playing their music. Well, we'll be talking more about that as we go along. But as a member of Soulbox, Mark, uh, Matt, how does it feel about getting back together? I know that you know you guys kind of went your separate ways a couple of years ago, and we can talk a little bit more why. But um, how does it feel to get back together and you know to be invited to this event and probably see so many people whom you haven't seen in a while? Uh, it's going to be great. Can't yeah, wait. can't wait for it. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's nothing. Uh, I've been playing live music for recording music for well, how old am I? Fifty-one. So. Since I've been 16, so mm -hmm. that's a lot of years, and um, I never enjoyed playing with any group of individuals more than more than these guys. So right. any chance to play with this group of guys is I'm very you much looking forward have to. You a, a tremendous following too. You know, I mean, one of your biggest fans is right here. I mean, he's throwing this in there, and <laughs> yeah. where there is Soulbox, there is Mark Nolan. <laughs> and uh, we obviously have the Soulbox tribe, and I'm sure that many of them are going to watch this when we get it out there. Um, you know, how does it feel, you know, when you're up there, you know, does it make a difference when you're playing with people whom you know? Like, you know, you know probably 98% of the people who are going to be there versus when you go out and play places where you don't know people. What's the difference between those two, if any? Actually, there's a big difference between the two. Um, there's a different excitement when you're playing for people you don't know. Mm -hmm. um, you're on your toes. Um, you're probably a little sharper just because you're so focused and making sure, you know. But playing in front of a bunch of people you do know, there's a comfort level there. And when the musicians are in that comfort zone, that's when, that's when the magic can happen. So exactly. it's, it's two different, there's not, it's not better or worse, it's just two different types of energy and they're, they're both great energies. Because I've seen you in both, I've seen you in both environments and I've noticed that when you are with the people whom you know, yeah. you know, the private parties, the house yeah. parties, et cetera, that there's a lot more ad-libbing going on, Absolutely, a lot more yeah. interaction with the audience. That's what I mean by that. That's where you the know, magic can happen. Right. And a lot of, you're in you a know, comfort a zone. Of, yeah. A lot of, you know, your little, little, uh, little snaps, little ball busting, yeah. and, you know. I remember, I'll never forget it when, you know, we were, we were down at Marin's party. Yeah. We were down at Marin's and, and she threw that party. We had you guys for my 70th birthday yeah. <laughs> a couple wow. of years ago, right? And it was a great day, and I remember you up there, and everybody's talking. And then all of a sudden, George, I, George knows that I like bright lights, big city. Yeah. And uh, so we get up there, and you know, the place was packed, as you know. And he goes, "Well, here you go. You know, I got this one. I got to dedicate. This is going out to Frank T. M. F. Walsh." <laughs> <laughs> and he filled in the M and the F. <laughs> and it was the first yeah. time that I ever heard that, right? <clears throat> and to this day. People will say, "Oh, there's Frank T. Mm -mm, Walsh." Yeah, yeah. But he did that, you know. Yeah. So I mean, you know, that type of stuff that you would do in a private party, you wouldn't do out out right. in, out at another event. Yeah, it was funny. Speaking of Georgia, it was it, it was funny. Like before Soulbox, me and George played in a band together called uh, Dirty Sugar. 
Okay. Dirty Sugar Band. Now. I'm not sure how it went, but um, and that was George's truly his first band, really ever. Because he started later on, didn't he? As far as yeah, as far as far as playing performing, yeah. Like yeah. so, Dirty Sugar was his first band ever. Yeah. And uh, and I watched him like go up on a stage with with his hands shaking, yeah. well. like in like just he wanted to curl up into a ball and just hide really and then to watch him blossom into like just this it's amazing this singer. guy who was just would walk on the stage with swagger and confidence oh he's got yeah. the swagger he's i, got I got swagger. to watch that whole thing happen it was it was awesome to watch right now how did you get involved with soul box mark what's your, oh, geez, your was, incorporation into this it was a magical moment truthfully um i met tony piazza again after years of not seeing him and it was just some an event that was, you know, it was almost spiritual because I was asking myself why was I in the place I was at the moment and after I had asked the creator that I looked up and Tony was waving to me really? from across the field and I hadn't seen him for years Wow! and he says you gotta see this band and I'm like what? He, he says this band is really good they're called Soulbox and I'm like well if they play in Rainham I'll go <laughs> and that was my criteria. Next week, they're playing in Rainham. And it was that, just like, and they never played in Rainham other times than that, except for my A couple house. years later, right. if they're playing Memphis, I'll go. <laughs> I'll go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it was just like that. It was magic. It really was. You nice. know, um, I was coming through a hard time of life, and right. the music was just, it just spoke to me, and it brought me out of a place I don't want to ever be again. Mm -hmm. Now we we talked a little bit, you know, before the show about you know what we were going to talk about and so forth, and you started talking about seeing this party as kind of um, somewhat of a reunion and, and somewhat of a catharsis and somewhat of a reminder to people of what we have gone through over the last couple right. of three years with COVID and the isolation and the distancing and a lot of turmoil that the country and everything is going through. You know, we're not gonna get into the political side of things, but just all the pressure and the stress that everybody has been going through and you're kind of viewing this as, a, you know, almost like a, like a messiah, if you would, that you, could, you were going to bring this to the people and provide them comfort and provide an opportunity to get together, to unify, enjoy Soulbox, and, and share some love. Is, right. is that a good encapsulation of yeah, it? Yeah, that, that is. We're in a storm. Okay. We're in the eye of the storm right now. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be another storm coming. Mm -hmm. But this is our window to get out there and enjoy life. Mm -hmm. Do those things that you, you, you were like, oh, I wish I could go on vacation. I wish I could go out and see friends. This is our time. Get out there and enjoy life. You know, we may not have this time in two years from now. Mm -hmm. We don't know what the future brings. Mm -hmm. Enjoy life. Mm -hmm. Get out there and in, be with friends, vacation, and come to this party. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a bond burner. Now, Matt. Don't burn down my bond. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a great yard, by the way. <coughs> yeah, you know? uh, so, Matt, I know that, um, you know, Soulbox. I mean, the musicians and music groups in general were affected by COVID. Oh, geez, and yeah. talk a little bit about what happened with Soulbox because you guys were on a roll. <coughs> you know, we, we were on a roll. You were growing in popularity. You went to the you know the the Boston Blues Society, who was represented very nicely in studio today by Beverly. Yes. You know. Yes. And. Um, you know, you rolled on that. You made some great acquaintances. You made it to the semis down in Memphis. And then you were on a roll, and all of a sudden, you know, the dreaded COVID hit. Yeah. Talk we, about we, that. What did that do? We literally had a record release party. Yeah. For yeah. A, a, what I consider a great album that we had just made. Uh, Which is good, damn good, by the good way. Good stuff. Um, and that was in that was like right before Christmas. Right. In 2019. Yeah. Yeah, November. Yeah. Um, and then two months later, we're in February of 2020, and boom. Yeah. Everything shut down. Everything stopped. I mean, we were, I was like literally in, in communications with a booking agency over in Spain. They were talking about, oh, they were interested in us. They wanted to like possibly book us throughout Europe and whatever. And COVID hit, everything just stopped. Right. Everything just ended. 
So what did you guys do? I mean, like personally, did did you fall into a, a sadness? Did you hit a depression? I or, well, you know, like as a musician, awesome. you know, not only is it it's only a piece of your livelihood, but how did that affect you? And well, it, fe- it affects it affected me greatly. I mean, yeah. at the same time, you know, I was you know forty nine years old. Yeah, uh, my oldest son was going off to his freshman year of college. Um, my music had been stripped away from me. My job was stripped away from me. Um, and at, you know, at the same time, you know, at 49 years old, you know, right. God just looks at me and he goes, oh, by the way, here's your midlife crisis. <laughs> so, <laughs> See, other uh, than that, it was pretty yeah, good, this, right? Yeah, 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 other than that, you know. <laughs> no, but, um, but it, it, it was difficult. It was a difficult time. Like, and I'm, not, I'm not complaining. I mean, everybody. Right, I understand. We, we're talking time. about you. Yeah, it yeah. affected everybody differently. Um, I don't think anybody enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, Did you develop your music at all? Because, I mean, I've talked to other people, and some people looked at that as an opportunity to be creative, oh, yeah. do something, yeah. you know, with the isolation. And, you yeah. know, did you... Did you do something different with your music. Keep practicing. Uh, yeah, How just, did you just stay? Kept, just kept practicing. Just stay kept sharp. On, kept on. Kept on practicing. Kept on doing. Like Soulbox, we get. We, we got together and we, we started writing a new album, uh, which we started recording. Um, and then, you know, we were in the middle of COVID. It, it, it was a long run for Soulbox. It was ten years. Yep. Um, and at the same time, we, we were just like right before COVID. We just put. We had like all these big grand plans right. and COVID hits and next thing you know we're just relegated to being a backyard party man because there was no live music anyway except right. people who had private parties. Right, right, <laughs> right. Uh, big parties. And it just, I don't know, it just, I don't know. Did you get you guys all remain friends, I take it? Oh, you know, you oh, still yeah, stayed in touch? Absolutely. And, yeah. You know? Yeah, uh, there, was, there was nothing personal between anybody. It was yeah. just, I think everybody was just like, yeah, you know, so, some guys were like, yeah, I just want to take some time and, right, you know, reevaluate. I, I, yeah, reevaluate and you know, just kind of live life a little bit without without the. Right. Oh, I got like three gigs this weekend. You know, right. Like right. I want to spend some time. And I think because you, there was so much time isolated away, I think people wanted to maybe use it to spend a little more time with their families because mm-hmm. they could now. And, right. You know, and like I don't want to be gigging three nights a week and not have any time to do anything. And, right. It's just life, you know, right, it's just, exactly. just life, basically. Um, now, with Soulbox kind of, you know, going different ways and, you know, kind of in that transition period, you got involved in some other things, right? You know, you picked up on other bands, you, yeah, you're playing, yeah. I mean, you're always out there doing something with different bands. Talk a little bit about what you've, what you've done with that. Uh, who I'm you playing play with, with a great bunch of guys, um, got the Danny Gallagher band, uh, cover band. Uh, yeah, we rehearsed with Mark Good old Bobby Buttermer, right? What's that? Yeah. Good buddy yeah. Bobby Buttermer. Bob, Rob Buttermer. The butter Great man. Band. The butter. I was just at a wedding Great with band. him. I got him a gig with my uh, my my brother-in-law. Got married last weekend, and Bobby was the DJ. Yeah. Did a hell of a job. Yeah, there's a guy uh, on the Danny Gallagher, Danny Gallagher band on guitar, Jay Cuska, who. Yeah. Really good. The, He's the, great. The, the great occasion's stuff, great. Yeah. Couldn't make a salt box gig. Yeah. Danny would, be, I mean, the Danny. Um, Jay Cuska would be the, the fill-in guy. And right. You know, I always, I always love playing with him, so Rob Buttermer called me. He's like, yeah, Jay Cuskis is going to be guitar. I'm like, yeah, I'm try, you know. And uh, we actually rehearsed at Mark's house. Really? Just to tell you what a, what a human being this guy is. Yeah. Um, during COVID, he had built a speakeasy, speakeasy in, the basement. in his basement, like literally, like the red velvet robes. Nice. The, the old 1920s lamps everywhere. Nice. He had built a bar with a moonshine just still in, in the back and... And uh, just really created a great room. And, and then COVID ended, and he just approached me. He's like, hey, why don't you use this space? I'm like, what do you mean use the space? He goes, just use it. Like, rehearse here, practice here. Wow. Yeah. I'm like, Good guy, man. Oh, it's great at night. They yeah. show up, and it's just music plays through the yeah. whole house. And right. wow. He just, he just goes, fabulous. I want I want this, my place to be a place where creativity goes out yeah. into the universe. And, right. And, uh, of all kinds. Now, have you always been this musically inclined? You know, when, you know, you get into the same. We, you know, we've probably known each other probably at least going at least ten years. Going back, we've known each other, been at parties and seen each other to that. But you know, I don't know a lot about you know pre Mark. You know, have you yeah, always was, been a music no, it lover? Was a different you know, when world. Did, when did you get involved into? It you know, was where when you are? I met Soulbox, and that was it. Yeah, it was. Um, it, prior to that, you know, I was raising kids. 
you know, chasing money. Right. The dream of, you know, the house. You weren't into the music it. scene at all? No, you I, you know, I, I was music? when I was younger, when I was in my teens, my early 20s, but then you have kids and life goes off Amen. and you start chasing that. And, he looks like a know. Woodstock baby, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Salt boxes that to him. <laughs> yeah, that and Wayne and Karen Beard. They were two fabulous human beings that... Wayne and Karen? And, yeah, oh, they yeah. entered my oh, life yeah. and they were so enlightening of a different lifestyle. It's very spiritual, yeah. very spiritual, very yeah. grounded. Yeah. They moved away to Florida though. Yeah, but they're still in our lives. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. where this is Karen's work. Her yeah. tie dye. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that was the one thing about Saltbox is it, it brought so many great people. It really together, did. You know? It really did. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Together. Yeah. You know, the tribe was there yeah, and they were yeah. always there, just, you know. And it was such an eclectic group of people. Yep. And yeah. And accepting of each yeah. other. And like again, like when you Going back to when you were saying, what's the difference between playing in front of strangers right, and right. people you know? Um, like with the Soul Tribe, like f f for the band, it never ever felt like that's the audience and this is the band. It was just one one, one, one big year, right, yeah. celebration. And we, we, right. we were just if it was a movie, we were just the band at the party. You know yeah, because I mean? like, at, at the parties though, you know, I noticed that you know it, it was such a, a melting pot because yeah. you know a lot of yeah. people have different flavors. So you might bump into one or two people here, one or two people yeah. there, and then but you know when the Soul Box got together. Everybody Everyone. was yeah. there. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody was there and you could feel it. Geez, I haven't seen you since last soul box. You know, yeah. everybody's yeah. there. They're having a good time. You know, the food is great, the camaraderie is great. You know, so you know, if the this opportunity that the people are gonna have for you, what should they know about that? What should they bring? What I know Soul Box is gonna be playing from what, six until ten o'clock at six night. Six until yeah. ten, which means like midnight. <laughs> <laughs> but six until ten. Yeah. Six they're gonna be full the, the people cops should until the, the cops show up again yeah, exactly. for the third you time know. to say, That's it. Yeah, you know, brick sleeping bags <laughs> so you can wake up uh, in the morning. You know. I was gonna offer up the teepee for people to sleep in, but magically I have bees living in the teepee now. Uh oh. Which is, no, that's not, oh, that's, yeah. Oh, the good bees. That's good bees. Good bees, good okay. Bees. I, I couldn't believe it. I went down there, I was going to clean it up and get it ready for, you know, anybody wanted to sleep it. And I was like, geez, what's that? Keep flying in? They were flying in and out. And I was like, those are bees. They, they seem to have colonized the teepee. Nice. So, yeah. So, nice. Yeah. I had visions of actually burning the teepee down on <laughs> December 28th. Which is the last year or this coming year? This uh, year. Well, it's been a couple of years I was going to do it, okay. but I was going to do it because that's the anniversary of Wounded Knee. Okay. And I wanted to show the universe that we've remembered these people that we've lost mm -hmm. for dancing. Right. They were dancing. Wow. And they took their lives. Wow. So that's why I was gonna, but now I can't burn it down because <laughs> I have bees colonizing, which is <laughs> miraculous. It's, it almost sounds like, you know, something out of a storybook. So what should people bring? People bring some food? Yeah, if bring you wanna bring something drinking. to share, bring your own drink, because I ain't supplying them. <laughs> <laughs> what kind um, of a party is that? Th this is a, a, a full on, plenty of fun party. Don't drink and drive. Amen to Don't that. make a mistake. You know, you're welcome to sleep over. Bring a tent. Bring a tent. Welcome tent. Camp in, your room in his yard. A bus. Now, now, a couple of people have asked me when I told it. I've kind of kept this a little on the QT, knowing that we were going to do this. But I have told some people about it. And if they say, you know, you're going to do a show, and if, you know, the tribe watches it, I mean, I, the last Soul Box stuff I put out there, 900 views, over 1,000 views. A lot of people can see this. What happens if a thousand people watch this and say, we're gonna to go to Mac's party, what are you gonna do? That would be a dream come Thank true you. For him. But where are they gonna go? Do you have enough room for that? How many people um, do you think it can hold? My dream would be Route 44 is closed down by the police <laughs> because there's parking up and down from uh, 495 to 24. Yeah. yeah, and the cops are the next day. You can't do that again. I'll be like, okay. We get the I news did channels. It, you're going to be on the, you know, you're going to be on the 11 o'clock <laughs> one. Oh yeah, please, 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 bring it on. Live. Bring it on, please. Remember, remember that? 
you two on the rooftop uh-huh. in downtown LA. They just oh did yeah, impromptu for yeah, and people would just name. oh yeah, yeah that's like next magic. Thing, block, city blocks it just like crammed with people. The cops Unbelievable. Like, you shut it down. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> so let's so say come to the show. <laughs> so let's say other than other than this show, you know that you're going to be doing at Marks. What do you think is going to happen with Soulbox going forward? Everybody's asked me, like, oh, you're going to do your show. Are they getting together? Are they getting together? What's going on with Soulbox? As of right now, the only thing going on with Soulbox is Mark's show. Uh, uh-huh. At the same time, I never I never shut doors all the way. Right. I always leave them open to crack. Right. So, I mean, if something happens, uh, I'm, I'm all ears. Now, know, is there, I'll, is I'll, there I'll like, in, who, who's, who would be the spearhead on this? You know, is it going to be a... Uh, if you talk with everybody, has there been chit chat about like, hey, you know, hey, Greg, you know, hey, George, you know, hey, you know, Rick, you know, what are we gonna do? Are we gonna get back together? Has there been that kind of discussion yet? Where are you all saying like? Well, we thought about it for a little for, for a split second in time. Because everybody uh, at home wants to know, back. you know, they all yeah. want to know. Like I said, as of right now, the only thing going on is this party at Mark's. That's right. it. Um, Has there been discussion about you guys getting back There was together? a brief discussion in a little bit. Uh, we actually rehearsed a, a few times, um, but that, that kind of, you know, we had a drummer who was playing with us who had other things going on and couldn't quite make rehearsals, and it was just yeah. like, oh, okay, well. And then that, that, that just Well, you got to know when you have another one um, in there. I mean, if... If, that's a big if, anything does come back out, it's probably not going to be the name Saltbox. Okay. Uh, I think we want to come up with kind of a fresh new approach to things. If, again, Well, you get if. everybody playing in different places. Um, you know, Rick, Rick Neistat, you know, have bass will travel. You know, he's <laughs> all over the place. Yeah. You know, in the industry. Greg Miller, you got Greg Miller, you know, he's playing a lot around. Mm-hmm. I mean, he'll, he'll, you know, hit open for a phone booth if, you know. If they, <laughs> Greg, if will they nev- Greg will never stop playing. No, you know, Greg's all just, over the place, just, you know. Just, uh, it's in his you soul. know, Rob moved on. He's playing with other bands. Who you got? Who would you have for a drummer? I know you had a guy. Um, uh, wide open. I mean, Wide uh, open, yeah. yeah. I mean, it has, like, again, this is all complete. Speculation. Now, you rumor know, had it that if you guys did get back together and you change your name, would you take your music in a different direction? Rumors about that um, that I started right now. <laughs> right, right now, now. <laughs> <laughs> that's a funny thing. I mean, like, not just with Soulbox or like any group of musicians. I mean, you can have all the grandest plans of changing the music or whatever, right. but the reality uh, is, you get in the room and you start creating music, and you're just playing who you are and However, that comes out is how it comes out. Whether that's a change or it's not well, a change. You can play, you know, knows, you guys, but. you know, you guys play a little bit down the middle. You play mostly blues, and you'll throw some rock in there. You throw a little reggae in there, but you have a unique style that yeah. you take a song and you make it your you make it your mm-hmm. own. Right. And I tell you that, you know, bright lights, big city. When you guys do that, when you're 100 percent on. I mean, you do it better than Gary Clark. I'd rather listen to your version than Gary uh, Clark. Gar- Gary Clark. I mean, uh, I'm I'll, serious. I'll, I'll, I'm dead I'll, serious. I'll, 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 I'll agree I, that there's this cover songs I'd rather hear us do than the, than the original. Artist. I have but that. I have that. That Gary Clark one. Oh, whew, I don't know about that. No, Gary you guys Clark's do it better. I mean, uh, when, when George is on his game and he's hitting uh, yeah. that, you know, and he does his growl and he does that uh, little. Yeah. I have that saved on uh, a video of that saved and. That's my go-to when I want to hear that song. I don't want to hear Gary Clark. I want to hear you guys, and I want to hear George doing there you it. Go. I'm serious. Yeah. I'm dead serious. I mean, the, the way I've always approached it, and I think the way, I mean, I've never really talked to the guys individually about it, but it's just always the energy I'm feeling is, like, if Soulbox does the Almond Brothers, right? Uh-huh. We're not doing the Almond Brothers. No, you're doing we're doing your Soul Almond, Box. We're, we're doing what the Almond Brothers did to us. You know what I'm saying? Right. Individually. Did to that. Right. You know. Oh, I agree. You, you make the song your own. Yeah. I mean, we, we keep the spirit of the Almond Brothers. It's like, Correct. But, but like, when I he, this is the energy I get from hearing the way the Almond Brothers did the song. Right. And then it comes out through me. Right. Adding the energy that I always felt from that right. song. You know, so it's. It was it's cool about take, you guys. But at the same is time, it keeps it keeps the spirit of the the original artist. At is the same it time? It's weird. You guys, you know, you guys get to show off a little bit too. You know, there are songs that are designed for you, where you'll do a little singing, and you can, you know, have your solos and have a song that's keyboard centric. And then, you know, Greg certainly shows off his wares. Then, you know, you get Rick bringing up the bottom over there. He gets his opportunity to do that. Right, but that, that give that you was drama never, some space. That was never by design. And really. 
Never. Seriously, it was never by design. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's when there's certain songs where like certain people in the band will get a better energy from that, and it, and it just shines through. And that, right, that's right. When, that that's when you're just like, okay, look, like, give him that space, you know. Right. But at the same time, it's the one thing about that I loved the most about being in Saltbox is there was no guy. There was no one guy. Right, like correct. Nobody wanted to be the guy. Nobody was the guy. It was just five guys playing music and adding whatever it is they brought to the table to that. Right. That was kind of the magic of it for me. If you could pick a song, there must be a song in your head that you say, boy, I wish we could play that song. We haven't done it yet. Pick a song that you wish that Soulbox could do that you guys, that you think you'd kill. Honestly? That you wish you could do. It was, just, it was funny. I just heard, I was just listening to it yesterday. There's a version of Hey Jude that Wilson Pickett does. With, yes, with I know that, I know that. That's the one I think I would love to do. Judge George could do that. I listen to songs, it's, it's funny how the effect of music is on yeah. people in general. I'll listen to songs and I'd say, George That's would kill that, yeah. Yeah. George should do that, yeah. or a soul box would do this song. Yeah. If you Pick have a, a song, song if you could, for if, this show, uh, do Hey Jude by Wilson Pickett. <laughs> <laughs> I love that song. I have all the Wilson's Pickett stuff. Pick a song. What would you? What song oh, would you like no, to have I, them I, have you're them play? Putting me under the gun here. Come on, kind come on. You know, yeah, that is kind of a loaded question. <laughs> I'll put my <laughs> own. He my was Walter good at that. Kite on, you know. no, I want to know what off. song you want them to play. What would you say? Half off, I'll listen for about two hundred more. But that was the first one that popped in the head. Pick one. Pick one. We're gonna start winding down. Whatever happened to Dirty Sugar, Matt? Uh, to what? Dirty Sugar. Oh, Dirty Sugar, right, right. George left, um, and then within a few days, I, I left. And uh, I, of all the people in Dirty Sugar, like, I, I just felt like, okay, like, this is the guy I want to continue working with, so I talked to George, and like, I'm like, hey, let's put a project together. I know some guys. And I hadn't even, but like the, the first, I, you know, when it came to guitar, like me and Greg back in the years ago, we, we did a lot of pickup gigs together, and I always thoroughly enjoy playing with Greg. He just cool. has this unique, special energy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And when he launches, man, he, he leaves. Oh, yeah. oh, he can go. He can, I yeah, can tell he, you stories about goes. Greg that um, I've told before on the show. But we got to wind this up, boys. Yeah. And uh, so, folks at home, you know, I hope you enjoyed this little impromptu show without some music, but I, I think it was pretty damn cool. This is a pretty good show. And Thank uh, you, Frank. I want you to get out there and uh, you know get to Mark's party. We're gonna put the information on how you can get there up on the screen. And as I always say, when Soulbox is out there playing or whatever name they're under or any other group that is out there, please go out and support these guys. Support the local musicians, support right. the national musicians, get out there and enjoy the music. And based on what's been happening over the last couple of years, it appears as that you have been. So continue to do it. So I want to thank you, uh, Matt. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, Frank. Mark, thank you so thank much you, for Frank. asking to do this. I want to thank Beverly Dancy, who, yeah, I got it correctly this time. Beverly Dancy, who's in the studio. I want to thank Matt, and uh, I want to thank Luke and Anya here at the studio. And I want to thank you for tuning in. So again, get out to Max Party. Follow the instructions that you'll see on the screen. And as always, I am Frank Walsh. Tune in and tune on. <laughs>